Hi everyone. So let's talk mesh distribution. I'm going to show you how to scatter objects on a mesh uh, using the various different techniques that exist in mesh. So uh, from uh, scattering randomly to doing um, edge, vertex, face randomly, um, using face area so that you get a more even distribution, voxels, all that kind of thing. We'll cover it all. And then a couple of neat tricks that you can use. Um, so the reason I'm in a scene with the deforming mesh, uh, so this is a skinned mesh, um, the reason I'm, I'm doing this is because this is a tricky thing to attach uh, points to because it, as it's deforming the face areas are changing and this means that um, uh, the nicer distribution methods uh, can fall apart because of the facing changing face sizes. So I will go into this in great detail. Um, so, but let's just get let's just get going. So, uh, if I just create a cube and then create a mesh network, uh, what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to I'm going to create a surface shader and just give these a kind of bright color so we can see them easily. And I'm going to shrink them down a bit, and then on the waiter, what I'm going to do is head over to the distribute node, and then I'm going to roll down mesh settings. I'm going to drag in, middle mouse drag in the skin onto the input mesh, and what that does is it automatically switches us to distribution type of mesh, and, it all, and the default mode is scatter. So what that means is we're scattering uh, points randomly over the surface of our object. So we can have 300, we can have uh, 3,000, we can have 34,000, we can have lots and lots and lots of objects. So let's go back down to a uh, lower number and I'll just shrink the shrink the cube even more so I can start showing you some problems. So, um, at its most basic level, uh, if I just turn off the skinned mesh, it's the most basic level. Uh, scattering uh, is just randomly placing points on the surface. You've got the surface normal here, so you can expand them along that if you want to. And <clears throat> uh, what you'll notice is that um, where the face, where there are more faces, so where the faces are smaller, uh, if I just show you on the original mesh, so small faces on the, um, on the thumb and the front of the hand there, and big faces, say, in the torso. So if I just undo that uh, solo select and hide the skin again. Notice that um, so front of the hand and then on the thumb very very dense point count and then in the torso very light point count and that's because we're not paying any attention to the face scale when we just scatter these faces randomly across the scatter these points randomly across the face. So um, the benefit of not paying any attention to the face scale is that this will deform really well. So um, there's no need to do anything else. If you've got one of the deforming mesh, this is just going to work fine. However, artistically speaking, having clumped clumped points isn't cool. A couple of options here. One in um, <laughs> yeah, is there? Is there? No, I can show you one. I can show you a couple of options later. I was about to turn a button on that doesn't work in this mode, so uh, you'll have to ignore me. Sorry. Uh, what we can do is scatter uses face area, and what that means is it will give us a much, much, much more kind of uh, even distribution. So you notice how the torso is, is now whoa, the torso is as densely populated as the hand, and um, so we turn that off. You see, remember clumping, and then kind of sparse point counts, and then turn that on. Everything's more even. So pretty cool. Everything remains even when you add more points. It's all very good. Um, okay, so. Um, the bad news here is that uh, when we move everything, you notice, that, look how noisy this foot is. If you just look at the uh, foot on the left hand side here, uh, you'll see that all the points are jumping around. And that's because the face areas are changing, which is, I mean, a tiny change in face area can have a profound effect on the distribution. So if I turn that off and then scrub through, look how stable it is. So we need a way to have this kind of distribution and for this to stay stable and not jump around all the time. Uh, you're in a look. I am going to show you how to do that in a few minutes. So you want to skip forward in the video if you've come here to see that. Uh, but first, uh, let's go through the other options that we've got. Um, so um, I, we've got a vertex distribution here, uh, which will scatter on the vertices in order. So starting at one and then going up from there. Uh, we can also go a random vertex, and then for the vertex face and edge mode, we've also got this flood mesh option, which will just put a point in every one of those components. So uh, that works for face center as well, uh, random face center, and then we've got um, edge and random edge. 
Let's go back to face center, right, let's go random face center. And if I do flood mesh now, you'll see that, um, yeah, we've got a point in every face. In fact, let's not do flood mesh, let's do something like this. Um, so, same problem as we had with the scatter. Uh, the points on uh, where there are large faces, there's fewer points because obviously there's only one point per face. And so when there's larger faces, you uh, logically have um, uh, larger gaps between the points and then down here on our thumb where we had lots of points close together uh, there are lots and lots of points so there's a way that you can minimize this in face and edge mode by going into the face edge settings and choosing enable scaling and what that'll do is where a face is large the object will inherit uh, the scaling of that um, of that face it will be larger because it inherits the scale of the face the size of the face and then when the where the faces are small like on the thumb here uh, we get a really small scale so um you can exaggerate the effect of that by using the slider um so uh, it might also be handy here to show you that you can offset all of these uh, scales so if you think well i quite like the scale of the large faces but the small ones have kind of got lost and i want them to have at least some scale what you can do is just add an offset node to the uh, not, not to the position channel, <laughs> you can add an offset node to the scale channel and then I just put a value of say something like 0.1 in here and what that does is it'll add 0.1 to every scale which means that the minimum scale that you've got in your mash network is 0.1 so that would be a way to uh, to help that, to mitigate that. Okay, so uh, like, we say, like I said, the smaller scale now is going to be 0.1. So what else can we do? Um, yeah, let's go back to, well I'll show you voxel now actually. So um, in the voxel mode, we have uh, this voxel size. So the larger the voxel size, the fewer points you get. And you lower the voxel size, and you get more and more voxels. So uh, there you go. That's kind of how that works. You've got this border size which eats into the mesh. So uh, you, a point will have to be further inside the mesh before it's uh, uh, considered uh, to be inside the mesh, if you will. And then we've got these kind of crazy pattern controls, which I actually think are broken in this uh, in um, this release. So hopefully we'll fix that um, very soon uh, in a hotfix for you. So. Um, Let's go back to scatter, and this technique that I'm about to show you can be used for voxels as well. Uh, if you want to have voxels, the like if you want to scatter objects to the volume of, of some things, and you would use voxel distribution, and um, I, well, I'll go through that. I'll go through that later, probably in a in a video. I'll stick on to the end of this one. Anyway, uh, so we've got our scatter. We've got our scattering that's even uh, even because of the we're using the face area, and we've got all this noise down here, and we don't want it. So what we do is we um, select our waiter, and what we do then is we go create mesh utilities, create mesh from points. Now what that will do is it creates a mesh with a vertex at every point location. So um, yeah, every everywhere there was a point in mesh, there is a vertex on the mesh that we just created. It's a it creates a it creates a huge mess basically in the viewport, um, but it's really useful for then distributing then distributing onto. So, why would we want to distribute onto this mess? Well, because we can skin it, and that means that it will deform properly. So let's do that. What we need to do is select the bones, select this mesh, and then we're going to uh, bind the skin. So the Mesh is now going to be skinned and deforming, right? So that's pretty cool, right? Then we need to copy the skin weights from the uh, from the original dance skin onto the um, onto the mesh from points mesh, and that's because what's the mesh from points mesh, uh, um, and that's because uh, you may have painted some skin weights, blah blah. Um, if you're, <laughs> I'm going to assume you know why you probably want to copy the skin weights, just because you want the animation to be the same. You don't want points sticking through the surface and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, copy skin weights. And now, uh, what this means is, uh, if I, hi I can hide the original root pro mesh, because we don't need that anymore. So our crazy mesh is now animating exactly the same as our original dancer mesh. Um, so if I create a cube, well, I could actually just use the same cube as before. I'm just going to create a mesh network, which is over here again. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this mesh from points onto the input mesh here. I'm going to choose vertex distribution. No, whoops, whoops, whoops. <laughs> vertex distribution and flood mesh. And then I'm going to turn off the crazy mesh. I'm going to shrink down our cubes. And I'm going to uh, assign a shader to them. 
and probably I probably want to turn off they get given these crazy normals uh the like our uh, the uh, mushroom points mesh uh mushroom points meshing I have to stop saying that mushroom points when we make that we don't do anything clever with normals and so I think we just want to turn off rotation so that everything's just flat and now when we have this really nice even animation uh like even distribution sorry and when we animate you see that there's no jumping around everything is kind of still and good and happy and we can get on with our lives so that is how you do that um whew, right so the same thing works for voxels and what that means is if i turn on my original repro mesh here and so this is the one that's jumping around everywhere so if i turn this into um a voxel distribution like so and let's say i want to um have these these um points randomized um slightly um what i'm going to do is i'm going to eat into the object by say not point five um no I won't do it like that. <laughs> what I'm gonna do is um what I'm gonna do well there are two ways to do this actually I'll show you I'll show you them both. So um yes what should I do? Um okay I okay what I'm gonna do <laughs> Thinking on the fly, it's not my strong point. Um, I will just create, the, do the same thing. I'm just going to grab this uh, waiter and I'm going to do the whole uh, mesh and points thing. And then I'll show you something clever you can do. So we've got this, then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to skin and then I'm going to copy the weights over. And then I'm going to, on the second mesh network, which I hid. So I'll hide the first one, show the second one. On the second mesh network, I'm going to swap the meshes. So I'm going to put this mesh on points two, and I'm going to copy it over mesh on points one. And then I can hide that, and we've got our uh, second mesh network. So th these are now voxels that are kind of deforming properly. You're in the right place, all that kind of thing. So that's cool. But let's say we want to shake this up a bit. We want to randomize these positions slightly. Uh, what we can do is, on the second way, so we can add a random node. And that's way too random, although <laughs> <laughs> still pretty cool um, so let's just say we want it to make these look like we've randomly put them inside the volume the, the trouble is a few of them have gone outside the volume and that might not be what you wanted so um, what we can do is uh, we'll add now there are two ways to go about this the reason I was umming and ahhing before is because we can use the um, we can use the border size on the voxel distribution to kind of push everything into the mesh and then when you add this random uh, later on, um, the objects are much less likely to reach the surface of the skin. So I'm probably explaining that really badly. But so so you can use border size to uh, to um, to m mitigate this somewhat. Or what we can do is we can use a fall off object. So let's do that. So let's add a visibility node. And what a visibility node does is obviously just turn off all our objects. Pardon me. So I'm going to create a fall off object, and that means that only the what did I just do oh my god what my scaling is set something crazy I don't think I'm going to use this scale manipulator um so I think I'm just going to up these numbers here and where hello where's my dancer there is my dancer so uh oops Okay, there it is. Um, you see, um, right, we can use a fall-off object to control what points are visible and what points are not visible. And as, if you remember from, well, if you've watched my other video on the fall-off object, you'll know that you can not just have a sphere as a fall-off shape, you can also have uh, curves and particles and cubes and also meshes, so let's do that. Um, on the fall off object here, we'll roll down connections and we can drag in the original skin. So if we, as soon as we do that, we get switched to um, this uh, um, mesh shape mode. And then in the additional settings, all we need to do is change the custom shape radius to nothing. And um, with that done, the points that are outside the mesh should get turned off. So we're, um, if I 
I can show you this working if I increase this random. So if I increase this random lots and lots and lots, you see as, as the points go outside the skin, they get turned off. So, and that's because we're using the skin as the fall off shape itself. So uh, as we reduce this random, then they're, they're kind of like coming, becoming visible again because they're inside the skin. So that is how I would create a random volume distribution with MASH. Um, now, it's slightly convoluted, but um, it works perfectly for deformation. So, um, yeah, it's just uh, that, that's the technique to use, and hopefully, um, someone will find it useful. Okay, thanks for watching. Apologies, everyone. It turns out I was not done. Um, I quickly just want to go back and uh, cover a couple of bits I forgot, and uh, they are um, edge, edge scaling and then component selection sets. So um, yes, what have we got going on here? Um, bear with me, <laughs> I've just broken everything. Okay, right, let's go. Um, so I have, uh, I'm back on the original uh, distribution that we had, so I can, you know, change it from scatter, vertex, random vertex, all that kind of thing. Um, so let's change this to edge, random edge. And then um, in the um, face edge settings, we've got this enable scaling on. But as you can see, it's not really doing anything. You would assume that this would stretch the um, stretch these cubes that I've got in the mesh network to kind of like be the length of the face. And the reason it's not doing that is because I messed with my cube scale. So the cube scale was um, it needs to be one for this to work basically. Uh, so if I do that, then our cubes are now the length of our edges. Um, however, um, it's it's height reliant. So I, what I can do is I can make them thinner. So if I go 0 0.2 in the width and 0 0.2 in the depth, you see that um, our our um, points are now the length of our sorry our cubes are now the length of the faces. So short face length down here, long ones here. And then if I turn that off. Uh, you've got kind of a, a cool effect in itself. Um, so yeah, that's, that's one of the things I wanted to show you, just that when you're using scaling with an edge, you need to make sure that it is uh, scaled to one in um, X, Y, Z, and then have, having it a height of one in its um, original cube setting. So that's how that works. Uh, the other thing I wanted to show you is that um, you can use uh, vertex selection sets. So we've um, got this option down here called selection set, and um, uh, if I disconnect the main mesh, because you don't actually need a mesh in this option here, in this box here, um, if you have a mesh in this box here and you have a vertex selection set, what will happen is that the, the vertex selection set will update every frame. So um, if you've got an animating mesh, so if, um, th then that might be useful. Um, anyway, uh, for all intents and purposes, all you need to do is middle mouse drag a vertex selection set into the selection set box. It will change you to vertex selection set mode, and then um, yeah, it will uh, add. You know, you if I select these verts here, you can see where they all are. Um, no, you can't see where they all are because the mesh is hidden. Um, but uh, lots of verts there. So um, we've got flood mesh, so you can uh, flood the mesh, uh, so you can have uh, every vertex in your set have a point. Now something that we added in right at the last minute, um, something that we added in right at the last minute uh, and so hasn't made it into the interface uh, is the fact that you can also use uh, face selection sets and edge selection sets. So there's a face selection set gone in and that works, cool. Um, so notice that this method here is still called vertex selection set. So that's so we couldn't change the interface at the point that this feature went in. So you can put edges and you can put faces in here. Um, it's just that um, the mode will say vertex, but they do work. So like I said, there's flood mesh and yeah, that works. And so those are the two things that I missed that I just wanted to cover. Uh, yeah, so thanks for watching.